with the thing. Because the Bible says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. We're not supposed to have pride. Except one kind of pride. My soul makes her boast in the Lord. You understand what I'm saying? I boast in the Lord. And this is the other thing. And I, 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 saw, I know I mentioned it before. Somebody went in one of the LGBTQ chats online and they said this. They made this comment. They said, if the B in LGBTQ stands for bisexual, then that doesn't mean there are only two sexes. Instead of y'all trying to make up all these others, all these other genders. That means there's only two genders then. My, my, my. (laughs) And then they showed the next part where they were booted out of the chat. (laughs) But you know, that's funny, but I'm going to tell you what's not funny. Out of everything you've heard me preach about the second coming of Christ. And if you remember, I taught that Jesus talked about time. Mm -hmm. And in the original language, it means God's going to get to the point where he's going to get fed up. And that is when he's going to say to Jesus, no more intercession, go and get my people. Now, there are several things that could upset God to that point. But I think... One thing that's really got him not happy right now is the fact that people are trying to change his creation. Now, he said, okay, now listen. Now, I know from way back in the Bible days, people were homosexuals and they did all kind of stuff. But now, are y'all going too far? Because now y'all trying to change what I invented. Uh-huh. Y'all trying to change gender? Amen. What I made? You're trying to change? You're trying to say you are not what I made you? All right. So that's what we're doing now, world. And so how far are you going to go with this? You're trying to change what I Invented what I created. What does Genesis say? Male and female created he them. Yes. That is it. Amen. No ifs, ands, or buts. Amen. Somebody say, well, that's not yes. too bad. But you don't know God. That's not too bad. Amen. Oh, no, no, no. You can't do it. You can't. You just cannot. Then on top of that, my people who come out against all of that foolishness on my behalf, y'all going to persecute them? Y'all going to persecute my children because they're not going to go with all this stuff they have in schools now, all this homosexual stuff, these books. I'm talking about elementary school library talking about two boys doing this, this, that, and other, two girls doing this, 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 in this public school. And y'all going to come against them? Target lost $9 billion because they decided to move the display from the front to the back. I think it was the gay pride display type thing. And so, oh, so then politically it just happens to come out. Oh no, but Target, we support this, this, that, and other stuff. Why? Because it's money. Mm-hmm. Good dog, right. man. Uh-huh. Money. But then people say, well, Jesus ain't talk about that. <laughs> I mean, he was on earth. He didn't talk about that. You don't see in none of that. Well, If you do what Jesus did say do, you won't be doing that. 
How about that? Now, now that's that. That's that. That's foundational. That's just that. But now, when you see these people and you get a chance to talk, and I say these people because they don't want to put themselves in categories. They put themselves in category and, and, and they're proud of it and this, that, and other. Witness to them. Love on them. Come on. Give them a hug. I'm not ashamed. Not at all. I want to find out what happened. So I talked to him. What happened? What happened? Gracious day. Now, this is way before Jasmine's time, what I'm about to say. I was talking to this girl. She said she was gay. I like, sweetheart, I would marry you yesterday. What in the world are you talking about? Yeah. I said, what's wrong? I said, what's wrong with me? I said, what? Um, I don't look good? She said, mm-mm, you got it. I said, see, don't play with me. <laughs> don't play with me. And you say, I got it? I sure was, and her girlfriend wasn't too far away from where I'm talking. I said, you bold, yes? Supposed to be bold in Jesus. I was caring more for her soul, I think, more than (laughs) more than anything else, amen. But from testimony somebody ministered to She's like, guys just want to mess over you. That's all. They just want to be, they just want the intimacy. They just want to please themselves. And that's all they want. And so they get tired of that. Like, hey, Dave, well, just wait till God send the right one. Don't just leave the whole originality of what God has created. Talk to people. You never know who God will use you to change. Never know. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. But the devil has manipulation out there. I, I had a vision the other day. And I saw somebody with two baskets. They're like the light color woven baskets. They had two baskets and they were standing before God. And the baskets, both baskets, had unrepentant sin in those baskets. And Jesus was not letting her into the kingdom of God. Not letting her into heaven. And I saw... This lady standing there. And God told me to release this word to everybody. Please repent of your sins. Amen. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Every one of them. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. I don't care. No, they were wrong. You better repent. Yes. And I don't mean say I'm sorry. Saying I'm sorry is not repentance. No. Repentance is when you turn, you change, you don't do it anymore. Do you know God doesn't even forgive us until we stop doing it? You did it, Lord, I'm sorry. You did it, Lord, I'm sorry. You did it, Lord. God said, listen, I'll forgive you when you stop doing it. Turn from your evil ways, then I'll forgive your sin, is what the word of God says. People are going to stand before Jesus Christ with un repentant sins boldly thinking they're right two baskets that's deception that is deception just like the spirit of Jezebel some people say the spirit of Jezebel is manipulation no it's not spirit of Jezebel uses manipulation for control, but it is not manipulation, and it's not control. Spirit of Jezebel comes in to use manipulation and control to destroy, mm-hmm. All right. to bring destruction. Yes. Mm-hmm. Had 
had the prophets of God scared because she had so much power, she had them killed. Prophet God like, mm-mm, ain't going around Jezebel. But the word of God says Jezebel went where? To hell. Why did Jezebel go to hell? Wasn't because she had all those prophets killed. Wasn't because she was evil. Wasn't because she used manipulation and, and, and control. What did the Bible say? Jezebel went to hell because God gave her a space to repent yes. and she refused. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is why. That's what the Bible says. I gave her a space to repent and she refused. Yes. Jezebel. Yeah, you killed my prophets. Yeah, you did this, that, and the other. And I'm going to still give you time to repent. And so when she dies, she has unrepentant sins. Are we living today with unrepentant sins? Pray not. Pray not. Hmm, I know I was right. Hmm. Okay. When I tell you God is real and it's only heaven or hell, trust me. Amen. It's only heaven or hell and that is it. Amen. We don't put up with foolishness from the devil or any of his earthly workers. Y'all, we have to be bold, all right? Stop with the patty cake baker's man. Stop with the nursery rhymes, and let's be bold for Jesus. Everybody else is bold, everybody else prideful. Yes. Amen. We see them prideful, but we're bashful. We're not gonna talk to you, we're bashful. Ooh, look at him, her. That's just a mess. We'll go clean it up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you're going to talk about it, be about it. Amen. Yeah. Stand before Jesus and you had an opportunity and didn't take it. Some people are waiting for somebody to come to them. They're just waiting. They're not going to listen to me. You don't know who they're going to listen to. Some of that is just a cry for help. Hey, listen, this is what I think. So I'm going to do this because this is how I feel. This is what I think. Are you sure? Well, I mean, golly. Mm -mm, To put on all that to look like that? Oh, no, that's too much but it's not too much to them that's a bunch of it's just puppy love but it's real to the puppy I'm not just talking about gay stuff I don't care what it is you see somebody doing something they should not be doing go to them whether they say they're saved or they're not saved go to them and offer Jesus we don't need a 10 pound Bible and break it over their head. Love. Amen. Love. Amen. We're going to talk about that today. Amen. People think love is mwah. No, oh, you mean the same mwah that Judas gave to Jesus when he oh, betrayed him? Wow. Wow. Okay. Okay, mwah. Praise the Lord God Almighty. All right. Amen to God. We are still in the series of processed humans because we need to be processed and we're being processed 
But see, the process is one thing, but what is the finished product uh-huh. from the process? Amen. That is what's important. Lord God, help us all. So today we're going to talk about trained hearts. Did you know you can train your heart? You can train your heart. Uh, Let me put it in this regard. Your heart has already been trained. You have already trained your heart. Wherever it is right now, you trained it to be just right there. Leah, will you please come help me? And Robbie, will you come behind her, please? They have gone through the growth track. Amen. God is so good. He's so... Isn't the Lord wonderful? Isn't the Lord kind? Amen. Oh, uh, well, uh, oh, there she is. Come on up, Ebony. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So while Ebony's coming up, I want you to know we're going to deal with 1 John 3, 18. 1 John 3, 18. Little children, let us not love merely in theory or in speech. What does that mean? Well, you know, we're supposed to love. I know we're supposed to love. So I'm just going to do my best. No, that's, no. mm -mm. That's theory. Or in speech, you know, I love you. You know, I do. No, 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 no. Don't, don't. It's, it's, it's okay to have the theory. It's okay to have the speech. But as the word says, just not merely in that. But how are we supposed to love? In what? Deed and in what? Truth. Truth. Y'all help me preach today, okay? All right. Yes, thank you. In practice and in sincerity. By this we shall come to know, perceive, Recognize and understand that we are of the truth. Who's the truth? Jesus Jesus is the truth. That's why the T is capitalized. And can reassure, quiet, I love this, conciliate and pacify our hearts in his presence. Isn't this amazing? That consistently loving others sincerely assures us that we belong Mm -hmm. to Jesus. Oh my goodness. Our hearts will then be confident of our relationship with Jesus, unmoved by any circumstance. Amen. You ever feel like you're not saved or you're so far from God? Is that what pacifies that heart? What gives it peace? The fact that what? We love. If we love consistently, you'll never wonder. Amen. Never wonder. Okay, I know love is not sexy. I already know that. It's not something that people just want to do all the time. It's not one of those subjects... Yeah, I'm not going to get people in here. All right, now, you better come on now. We need to love. Teach us in here, apostle. No, no. And no, I'm not going to get that. We're not going to get that, okay? So don't take it personally. If I was talking about God loving us, we'd have more. Woo! But when we have to do something. <laughs> Okie dokie. Verse 20 says this, whenever our hearts in tormenting self-accusation make us feel guilty and condemn us, for we are in God's hands, for he is above and greater than our consciences, our hearts. 
And he knows, perceives, and understands everything. Nothing is hidden from him. So even if our own hearts try to cause us to feel as if we're not pleasing God, when we are genuinely pleasing to him, loving God and everyone will give us peace to know that we belong to Jesus. So Ebony, how does loving people, loving God and loving people give us peace to know that we really do belong to Jesus? When we love God, when we love people. question but I immediately thought of uh, the peace of just doing the right thing um, that's wonderful yes I'm trying to give it you know I tell stories with examples so. well yes to give, to give examples with stories I'm trying to think of something who was on the spot I don't know whatever you would think of was just doing the right thing um, yeah it has to help me out <laughs> what happens what happens is and, and you're 100% correct. Doing the right thing, why do we want to do the right thing? Because we want to please God. Amen. Want to please God. Yeah. Want to give God glory. Yeah. Oh, I, I thought of a story. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's it, that's it. Yeah. <sighs> Thank you, Nancy. So, walking out, um, well, I went grocery shopping, got something from Walmart. And I, I'm sure we all did this. We forgot something. We need to pay for it, you know, whatever. And it's okay. Then Walmart employees don't see me. I'm sure nobody's watching me, but I'm like, Lord, I'm not about to lose my blessing over this $6. Let me go back and pay for this. So it's just, you know, I would use that example. Just It's a piece of just doing the right thing. It's just right. loving God's people and just expressing that love, giving that love is just the right thing to do. That's right. Amen. Every time we do the right thing, we're not doing it to please self. We're doing it to please God. Because the easiest thing is just to, you know, well, hey, I got it and just go on and do the do. But we love God. And we want to please him. And that makes us to know we belong to Jesus. Especially when you love somebody that you don't want to love. Yes. All right. Amen. You know, there ain't nobody but Jesus right there. Come on. It's only, Father, if it wasn't for you, I vow to you. Because it's just that real. Amen. I belong to Jesus. So that means I don't belong to myself. So I'm not going to please myself. I'm going to please you, Lord Jesus. I'm going to please you. Consciousness, hearts, believe primarily by feeling. This is so very important. Let's look at this. The the tormenting self-accusation make us feel guilty and condemn condemn us, our hearts. Hearts are controlled and convinced by feelings. In my feelings, I feel this particular way. That's why these hearts need to be trained. Consciousness, hearts believe by feeling. This is how I feel, so this is how it is. That's just it. Made me feel this way, and this is how it is. In other words, what? I ain't going to listen to God. I already know how I feel. All right. And because I feel this way, this is what it is. Then we, then we go to God and we think God is on our side. Mm-hmm. All because of a what? Feeling, according yeah. to the word of God. This is why it's necessary to train our hearts to believe by faith. Not by feeling. By faith. That is why a lot of people don't have faith in God. That is why a lot of people, when we pray, we don't get what we pray for. 
Because we're going by feelings. Yes. With the mouth confession is made, says Romans 10. But with the heart, man what? Believes. Believes. Whatever your heart feels, that's what it's going to believe. Really? I thought really our hearts are supposed to be by faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, so we walk by feeling, <laughs> <laughs> not by faith. The only way to override being in our feelings that the world calls natural. It's natural. You know, hey, we just feel a particular way. And so we're supposed to act according to how we feel. You feel anger, so you're going to do what? Get angry? But you're not angry. You just feel the spirit of anger. How many times have people, because they felt anger, they said or they did something, and they're like, oh my goodness, what did I just do? Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Were you that angry to do it? No, I don't know what came over me, a feeling. Mm-hmm. All right. You felt anger, but you weren't angry. I've said this over and over and over and over and over. Don't let your feelings convince you that that is the truth of who you are. Amen. How you're feeling isn't always how you're doing. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. So. <laughs> Robbie, why do people allow feelings to convince them that what they're feeling, that's the truth. Because I know what I feel. I think as humans, we tend to uh, base everything off of our five senses. All right. Oof. So if we're going by our five senses, then we are placing our feelings based on our five senses. Now, if you look at it like this, if, if you're feeling angry or you're feeling hurt for that matter, um, you're going to wind up, uh, if you're not stopping and thinking about, which was, was, was one thing that I had a problem with in my past was acting out on my feelings and not thinking about right. the consequences of those feelings. Right. Yeah. So if I'm not thinking about the consequences and I'm just going on ahead and acting out on them, then it, it, it has repercussions. Yes, it does. <laughs> in, in, in the simplest form. And it's, not, and it's not just repercussions for myself. It's repercussions mm. that goes to everyone else, too. Yes. yes. It's a ripple effect. <laughs> yes. Yes. Amen. What people don't realize also is that our feelings... And our emotions is one word, pride. It's one word, pride, because what you're doing is you're making your feelings and your emotions all about you. Yep. And instead of walking out in faith, which is about God, you are now putting yourself on the pedestal and on the spec. And on this spectrum where it's like, okay, well, my feelings are going to override my faith. So, God, pretty much I'm taking away your authority and I'm walking in my own authority, which then you are bringing down. Come through, come through. Which then it's a ripple effect because not only is it affecting you and your walk, but then it's also affecting your family and it's affecting those around you. To where now they're saying, okay, well, if it's okay for you, then it's okay for me too. When really and truly, you're so into yourself that God's saying, okay, any day now, I'm waiting for you. He didn't go anywhere. He's right there. That's right. But what happens is we get so caught up in our feelings and our emotions that we walk away from him. And here he is still right there waiting for us. So he is waiting for us to repent. Amen. Turn from our sins and stop doing what we're doing and Amen. stop being so led and controlled by our own selves 
So that way we can step out in faith and doing what he really wants us to do. Because you know what I've realized? Sometimes the things we feel, uh -huh. it's not for ourselves. Sometimes we're picking up on things where God's saying, you know what? This is not yours. I don't know why you're even trying to hear right. it. Right. Yes, Lord. You're picking up on something that's not even yours. Amen. If Jesus told us that we can walk in health, healing, and wholeness, well, then that's what we need to be walking in, health, healing, and wholeness. Amen. If we know that he is our provider, then how come we're not trusting him to provide? Come on. That's right. So all of that goes down to your feelings and emotions. Amen. So it's either going to oh. be us or him. <laughs> come on, come on. So when we look at our hearts and we feel and then we believe mm -hmm. according to our hearts, we believe this is really us. Yeah. That's what convinces us. This is just who I am. No. What did the, who did the Bible say we are? That's who I am. What the Bible says I am. That's who I am. Yeah. But no, I feel this way and... I'm going to act this way. Whoa. <laughs> the Holy Spirit's like, that's not what, that's not what the word says. So, you so you're going to respond according to how you feel. Because I feel it in me, so I believe it is me. Oh, I feel it in, I see you. I feel it in me, and so I believe it is me. And that has been a major problem for a lot of people living. Amen. It's not you. I feel it in me because that's where my spirit is. That's where the sensor is. All right. I've said it over and over and over, but I have to always bring it back because we need to hear it. Everybody knows about McDonald's. Everybody knows about Coca-Cola. <laughs> but you constantly see those commercials, don't you? You have to keep it in your ears, your eyes. Please know that because you feel it, that doesn't mean that's what it is. I'm going to say it like this. If you didn't get it by faith, leave it alone. Exactly. If it came by feeling, uh-uh, 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 nope. This, this anger, this was easy. This came by feeling. No, 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 I'm not going to act on it. If it came by faith. Oh, yeah, this is God. Yeah, this is definitely God. Okay, son, I'll let you go ahead now. I, to go off what Leah was saying a little bit ago, uh, God is saying, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Yes. Uh, are you guys going to open? Are we going to open the door and let them in to actually truly change our thought process, our way of thinking? Our feelings. Because if we're just solely going off of feelings, then we're not being led by the Holy Spirit. We're not Come being on. Led by God or Jesus. For that Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Ebony? So I wanted to piggyback off of Leah and Pastor, kind of show, because you had a, um, a point about just um, being prideful. That was mm -hmm. your point. Um, even with God and, and um, Pastor, you were saying, well, let me just um, stick with Leah. So just to show you what it looks like. What, so a s quick story. I was um, upset about something and I, I'm getting to the point where I internalize stuff so much before I would just relinquish to God, you know, God is my safe place. God is my just everything. I could just, if I can't talk about it in the back, I could talk, I could talk about it to God. Right. But this particular time, I guess I'm getting, it's bad. I'm, I'm going to work on it, y'all. I'm getting hmm. to the point, I don't even yeah. want to talk to God about it. Um, I'm prideful with him. Mm -hmm. So I told him, I was like, Lord, I don't even want to talk about this. Right, I don't want to talk about this right now. I'm, I'm just going to go to bed. Um, well, matter of fact, I said that, no, 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 before I said that, I asked him a question. And he was basically telling me that it's something on my heart and I need to talk about it. And I was like, Lord, I don't want to talk about it right now. Um, I'm going to bed. <laughs> to God, right? You know? Right, right, right. Who am I? <laughs> Who am I? <laughs> so, woke up, 
pray, call, call myself trying to pray. I'm trying to get over what I'm dealing with. And he's, he's telling me again, just talk about it. <sighs> Fine, Lord, I'll talk about it. You know, but yeah. the pride, you know, yeah. who am yeah. I to be like this yeah. to God, y'all? Like, All right. God. <laughs> yeah. I feel you. Mm. 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 Yes. But I'm, sh- I'm sharing it because I'm sure we all have had that. All felt like we have felt like that before. We're so upset. We're so proudful. Thank you. We're so in our feelings that we can't even talk to Jesus. Right. Y'all. Right. But anyway, I just wanted to share that. Hope that helped somebody. But it was something that you said. I kind of. I'm trying to remember because I got so caught up in it. Um. What was the story, y'all? <laughs> What was the story? It will. Yes, and it's I'm coming back. But I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that that is remarkable because we get so caught up in our feelings, we don't want to talk to God, which shows us our feelings can separate us from God. Amen. Completely separate us from God. We have placed our feelings above God, his word, who he is. We have caused a division. We caused, like Leah just said, we caused the division. We're going to stay here on this point and we will (laughs) have to do. Verse 21, and beloved, if our consciences, our hearts do not accuse us, once we love Once we love, once we're not in our feelings, it's just loving. We trained our hearts. And this is big. I'm telling you. Train your hearts. Oh, no, I feel this. Mm -mm. This ain't from God. Oh, I can do this. It'll be by faith for me doing it. That's what we operate on. That's how we train our hearts. I'm going to feel. Please don't think that you're not going to feel. This message is not a preventive message to keep you from feeling. You're going to feel. I'm just saying don't act on feelings. All right. And beloved, our consciences, our hearts do not accuse us. If our consciences, our hearts do not accuse us. If they do not make us feel guilty and condemn us, we have confidence. Complete assurance and boldness before God. Before God. If we love, we have confidence. Before God. Once our hearts have been trained by our intentional efforts to love God and everyone through sincere deeds, we can then faithfully approach God confidently and boldly. The word of the Lord says, verse 22, and we receive from him what Ever we ask because we what watchfully obey his orders observe his suggestions and injunctions follow his plan for us and habitually practice what is pleasing to him I ask and I, I didn't get anything from God you're not obeying his orders Amen. it's clear I prayed about it but I don't know. Maybe it's just not the will of God. Uh, you're not doing the will of God. Amen. We have to do the will of God. Then we can get what God has for us. Amen. Obeying everything God tells us to do means that we love God and others. Mm. Mm-hmm. Obeying everything. Because we are woven, not connected, woven like material. You can easily plug something in and connect it and easily disconnect it. No, we are woven in God's love. Our relationship with him gives us every opportunity to know, know, know how he desires to bless us. When we're close to God, we will know he desires to bless us. And sometimes he even tells us how. Then, 
Whatever we ask him already comes from his love. We're already loving. We're allowing God's love through us. So when we go in prayer, it's all about love. When we're living, it's all about love. Somebody says or done something, does stuff against us, it's still all about love. Yes. So then when we pray, we ask him. It already comes from his love. So we'll receive what we ask for. I'm just all in the love of God. Stay in the love of God. You'll ask according to his love. Not selfishness. Amen. Well, you're supposed to love yourself. Yes, please. That's the word of God. Love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Please love yourself. Amen. I see you. Love yourself. Amen. Love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. Love God. Amen. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> to piggyback off of that, it's a choice we have to make every day. You get up and you go about your day, um, starting your day off. God, I'm going to love this person. I'm going to love that person. I'm going to love this person. I'm going to love that person. I'm going to go. It's a choice that we have. You literally have to make every day. Right. Uh, yes. You can choose to like someone, but love is God's, God. God really hasn't given you that choice of wow. not to love someone. Wow. Wow. Right. Uh, if we are, if we are His, if we are His body and His extension, and we are to be like Him, yes. then we should choose to love each and every person, each Amen. and every day. Amen. Every day. All right, before the assignment, and Leah and then Ebony. One thing I'm going to say about that, too, is, yeah, we choose to love on a daily. But here's the thing. Are we truly loving each other the way that God says love? Because if we don't love ourselves unconditionally, without condition, then how can we love somebody else the same way? Jesus loves us without any type of condition. But here's the thing. And, yes, I said but. Because what happens is we'll say, I love you, but I love you if. All right. So we need to take the but and the if out and just say, hey, look, I love you. Which means I'm going to do whatever I can to help you. I'm going to do whatever I can to support you. I got your back. But so many times people will look at you and, and say to you, I love you, but. Only if you do such and such or so and so. It's with condition. Jesus said, no, take out the condition and love unconditionally. Yes, Lord. When we start to understand what it means for us to look at ourselves the way Christ sees us, then when we look in the mirror, we're not going to see ourselves. We're going to see Christ in us. Which means that we're going to love ourselves the way he does. Which means that we are then going to be able to love each other the way he does. Amen. So it's about self-reflection. And another thing, I, when you were talking about, when it was saying about the woven, like the baskets that you saw in your vision, we are woven into him. But another thing, if we don't love, how can we love if we don't? Repent of the sin that God's saying, hey, I need you to deal with this. Hey, I need God. you to deal with this so he can say, okay, I forgive you. Because like you said, repentance means you stop what you're doing and you don't do it anymore. That's right. When you are still walking and saying, okay, well, you know what? Eh, I told a little white lie. What is a white lie? It's still a lie. All right. There's no such thing as a small sin and a big sin to God. Sin is sin, yeah. regardless. So if you know that you are lying, if you know that you have done something wrong to somebody else and you don't repent, then you're then like you saw in the vision, the basket's going to get full. And you're just going to keep making excuses. The enemy is going to have you keep making excuses over those lies. And God's saying, if you repent... Not only will I forgive you, but I'm going to show you how to walk in my love. Amen. 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 And, and, and before Ebony, I'm glad you said full 
You, this is going, this gives me the opportunity to share. The baskets weren't full. Both of them were just about half full. There were, but I don't know why there were two baskets of unrepentant sin. Mm -hmm. They weren't even full. But two of them. I don't get the revelation of that. I'll just say what God said. Will you please repent? Stop what you're doing. Yes. You know it's wrong. Amen. Just stop. Because Jesus is coming soon. Remember, these messages are based on what God told me. Mm -hmm. Prepare people for the second coming of my son, Jesus. Yes. This is the season that we're in now. Because he's coming soon. And when it happens, it's going to be just as real as we're sitting here. Mm -hmm. yes. Just as real. And oh, it is my strong desire. Amen. That if it happens during a Sunday morning service, not one person will be left in this building. Amen. Not one. Amen. That's why we do what we do. Not I do. That's why we do what we do. That's why we fast every week. Yes. Not for three hours or 12 hours, 24 hours, water only. That's why I love the way that we do Sunday morning services yes. so that we can just all come and talk about the word. It's not just apostle talking. We're here sharing. Why? And nobody knows what I'm going to preach. Nobody knows. Those who are, are members here, they, they, they come up and, and Sometimes they're nervous, but then after a while, they just get to going. We love it. We absolutely love it. So let's love. And remember, love isn't the fruit, fruit. Love is being kind. First Corinthians 13. It's not puffed up. Yes. Takes no account of the evil done to it. That's what I'm talking. I'm talking about that type of love. Yes. Also, now please know love doesn't mean you can walk all over me. Don't get it twisted. Yes. Twist not the love of God yes. in my life yes. and in your life. Yes. You're not going to run over me. Yes. I love you, but I ain't crazy. <laughs> don't take my love for weakness don't take my love and my humility to say you can do whatever in the world you want no that's not going to happen let's just do what God says just do what God says do thank you yes Ebony Fowler yes um, so you was, the point was of what you were saying was how you feel it is not how you're doing. So I just wanted to share kind of on one side of what that may look like. Yes. I was having a conversation with someone and I was in a, I was in a happy mood, but I felt depressed. You were in a happy mood. Yeah, I was You fine. felt good. I felt good. <laughs> but I also felt depressed. I felt depressed. I felt wow. Down. I feel like I lost everything. I just felt just messed up at the same time. But I was like, but... I was fine, but I was like, I have no reason to be, I have no reason to be depressed. So I was just sharing that with that person. They was like, oh, you're sensing me. That's Ooh, what I feel. That's what I, feel. I love it. So I just wanted to share that. Um, Wait, you can't just stop there. You minister to them or something? Like, yeah, you're sensing me. Yeah. Oh, you're depressed? Yes. Yeah. So y'all, I just wanted to share. No. Well, you what? Know, you minister to them or what? You just, talk, you, you left us that. hanging. I mean, don't tell the person's name or nothing, but you minister to them in their depression or something? Yeah, yeah. And we, and we talked about it and we oh, prayed. And okay, like, good. All that great stuff. Good. <laughs> you just left us hanging. <laughs> we're, we're not nosy. We're hungry because that, that yeah. inspired some people like, wow, yes. maybe what I'm feeling is something that somebody else is going through. Yeah. 
And you and and you, like you said, it was quite, I guess, confusing because you're like, why am I feeling depressed? I don't have a reason to feel right. feel depressed. Yeah. It's a feel. Okay, go forth. I just have a question. Yes. I just want to make sure um, I'm. I understand that maybe some other people is probably confused. So I don't know, but. So emotions, are they spiritual? Are they natural? Are they both? Ooh. Okay, good. Now, this is emotions come from the soul. Okay? Man was formed out of the dust of the ground. God breathed into man the breath of life. Then man became a living soul. Intellect emotions, and will. There are other parts, but those are three major parts. So our emotions always, always, always respond to stimuli. Yeah. Something that somebody said, something that somebody did. Emotions are stirred. They are natural. Emotions are natural. They're natural because, ooh, I love this. They're natural because they're responding to natural. It's spiritual when you are at the casket of your loved one and you're like, God, I just bless you. God, I just praise you. Amen. Instead of, ah! You understand what I'm saying? That's emotion. The ow is emotion. But when you're there in God, I just thank you for this life. That is spirit. I was just praying this morning. Just as I did the prayer that I sent out. Y'all will hear it. I was just praying this morning. I said, you know, happiness is an emotion. And I preached it before, of course. Joy is a response. Because fruit respond to season. That's why we don't get strawberries growing in December. Fruit respond to seasons. They are responses. Fruit are responses. Joy is one of the fruit of the spirit. It responds. Yes. So we choose whether to respond emotionally or fruitfully. Oh, shoot. Mm. <laughs> How are we going to respond? Feelings always trigger emotions. Feelings will never trigger faith, ever. The only thing that triggers faith is what? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by what? If we don't have the word of God, how can we have faith in God? It's not feelings. How can you go through this the way that you're going through it? Woo, goodness, I'd be feeling everything from here to heaven and back. See, that's the thing. I feel everything from here to heaven and back. But feelings don't tell me what to do. My feelings don't dictate my actions. God's word dictate my actions. Yes. Oh my goodness. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every feeling. No. Every feeling. I live by my feelings. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth. That's how I live. Why didn't you slap him? Because I don't live out of my emotions. If I, if I did, I'd be in jail. Because I would have beat him halfway to hell. Because he ain't saved, so he would have been halfway to hell. You know? All right. I think now it's, it's time for life work assignment. Amen to God. So ask the Holy Spirit to help you train your heart to love and never respond out of mere ungodly feelings. Holy Spirit. I already did it, but I'm just saying, Holy Spirit, help me train my heart. 
Help me to train my heart to love so I can have a heart full of faith, never feelings. So what do you do with your feelings? What do you do with your feelings? You abandon them. Abandon them. Leave them alone. Ignore them. Don't pay them any attention. Somebody said, now that doesn't seem fair because, okay, if, like, like, if somebody died and I'm sad, I, are you saying I shouldn't feel that? Like I said, feelings are going to come. Of course you're going to be sad. But in my sadness, get, get what we're saying. We're talking about don't act out of your feelings, okay? So if you're sad, your mom just died, and then somebody comes to you, and they say something just off the wall, because sometimes in those times, people say the most off the wall stuff. They come and say, well, do you feel guilty about anything? Do you think you took care of her the best you could during those times? Get the... You know, now you're acting out of your feet. You don't respond according to, because I'm sad. Now it has morphed into an anger. Amen. We're not going to respond according to feelings. Amen. One thing, and I'm going to just say this real quick. Okay. Um, <laughs> one thing that occurred to me when you were talking yesterday, I was really sick. I was not feeling good at all. Feeling good. And we had played, you know. Did, did, did baby boy have anything to do with that? Uh -huh. He did? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, and I'm thinking. Okay, How many months? Uh, six. Six. All right, man. So we're all six. right. All right. Um, <laughs> but I just, I didn't sleep another sleepless night. And I'm thinking, okay, God, you know, how, you know, what do you want me to do? Yes. How do you want me to respond to this? And he says, spend time with me. Mm. If you can't sleep and He's if such you're a loving feeling God. sick, spend time with me. So I said, okay, God. So from 2 o'clock up until 6 a.m., it was just me and him. The house was quiet. Nobody was, you know, and it was just me and him. And then um, Robbie woke me up yesterday morning, and he said, hey, you know, we got to get ready to go. Because we're supposed to be in Sumter, and I'm thinking, I'm not doing this, Lord. Or I'm not doing this. I really want to cancel. I don't really want to go. God, I'm not feeling this at all. And the Holy Spirit said, I want you to go. And all it was is we were just taking the kids out on a day at the lake. But I'm just thinking, Lord, I really don't want to. I'm not up for this. Not today. Not today. And then I'm thinking about the waves. I'm thinking about the boat. I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking. I'm relying on my own feelings. When we get out there and everything's fine... And on the way, the Holy Spirit showed me, it was almost like an open heaven. We were just, we had K-Love going, and I'm sitting there, and I'm just in complete and total worship. Do you know that when I got into worship, the feelings that I was contending with, the feelings subsided, the sickness went away, and as I was in worship, the Holy Spirit was able to minister to me to when we got out there, we had a great day at the lake to the point where I fell asleep on the boat. <laughs> Jesus did too, so that's, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yep. And then all of a sudden I have Robbie coming over. Hey, you need to wait. I'm like, seriously, dude. <laughs> I wanted to say, okay, you're like the disciples. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is funny. But the thing is, is we had a great day yesterday to the point where when we quit relying on our feelings and when we feel sad, when we feel discouraged, when we feel sick, okay, Holy Spirit, how do you want to handle this? Instead of relying on our own selves, turn it around and start saying, okay, God, how do you want to deal with this situation? I'm glad you said when we feel discouraged. I'm not discouraged, but I feel discouraged. Right. Personify it. Yeah. Oh, discourage is here. I feel, I feel discouraged. Right. Fear is, oh, I feel fear. Right. Oh, oh, hi, lonely. I feel you. Right. I feel lonely. I'm not lonely. I'm not fearful. I'm not discouraged. 
but I feel it. I feel it. Like, like Ebony said, I don't know why I was feeling depressed because depressed was near you. Right. She said, you're picking me up. I ain't picking you up. I'm picking up this, the spirit of depression that's there. Ah, my goodness gracious. All right, so that is how we train our hearts. Amen. Amen. Father, you're so perfect, you're so glorious, you're so wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, I, I guess we thought that our hearts, and I'm saying we, including me, before you gave me this message, I guess we thought that our hearts just, it just happens and we just live accordingly, but we have to consciously, on purpose, we have to train our hearts. If we don't train our hearts, devils will. If we don't train our hearts, people will. We will just respond to people by how we feel. We respond to devils because of how they make us feel. Every devil, the devil of depression, devil of fear, devil of this, devil of that, we'll respond because of how we feel. Instead of training our hearts, no, you will not respond according to, and you will not cause my soul to become emotional because of what you feel. No, heart, you're going to believe God. You have your faith in God. And I'm going to respond to God out of faith, not out of a feeling. Father, thank you for giving us such clear instructions and how to defeat the devil. And I know devils are very angry at this message because this defeats them. This defeats them. And that is why we need to go out and witness to people who are not doing right in your sight. Because of this, they're acting according to feelings. I feel this way about this person, so I must be this. I feel this way about that person, so that must make me a that. Feelings. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name for giving us truth. And thank you, Jesus, because you are the way, the truth, and the light. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. So for those who aren't saved or you need to come back to God, just pray. Please give your life to God. Give him your whole heart, mind, soul, spirit, and body. And just pray right now. Those here and those listening and watching and say, Father, I come before you now by Jesus Christ, who died for me. I confess it, and my heart believes it. And Father, you raised him from the dead. Raise me from my death of sins. Come into my life, Jesus. And live your life through me so I can please the Father as you do. Thank you, Father, for saving me. I belong only to you now, not to myself or anyone else. I'm yours, Lord, and I love you, and I will live for you. Thank you in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank God. Let's thank God for the sharers. Leah, Robbie, Ebony, amen. Thank you. Thank you for hearing God today. Yes. He spoke to us. He really spoke to us. We still have, during this season, this, there are only four, now there are only three more weeks left. During this is a very short, we call it summer splash of small groups. And there are only four small groups, right? Five small groups. So when you go out, please go to the tablets and register for a small group. It has been wonderful. This past week has been wonderful. Amen. Register and watch what God will do for you. Amen.
All right, if there is nothing else, praise the Lord. Father, we just bless and praise you. You're so good to us. You're so perfect. You make all things new. You change us. You help us. You give us what we need. And so thank you so much, Father. We just love, 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 love you. And we look forward to everything that you're going to do in our hearts. In our hearts. Father, your word says that man looks on the outward appearance, but you ponder our hearts. You look at our hearts. You are, you're not only the heart fixer and regulator, but you judge our hearts. And Father, we want our hearts to be right with you. So thank you for helping us to do so. And Father, we will bless and praise you forevermore. And I apply the blood of Jesus on every single one of us and every demonic force coming against people. Somebody in in your chest area, especially in the right area of your chest. And every other malady, everything that's going wrong that a devil is causing, and I'm speaking to every single demon, whether you're here or listening and watching, and in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you to take your hands off of them, take your influence off of them, and you go in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for how perfect you are. Thank you for your power, your authority that you've given to men, women, boys, and girls according to your will and your love. In Jesus' holy and righteous name we pray. And thank you that we are protected, well protected. Thank you you for the blessings. Thank you you for the increases, naturally and supernaturally. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you, love you, love you.